Today we're talking about the Kia Stinger and specifically why this car failed. First we need to tackle how this car actually came to be. Let's rewind the clock back to 2011. At that year's Frankfurt Motor Show, Kia debuted the GT concept. It was a pretty swanky four-door with suicide doors in the back, big wheels and an overall aggressive stance. Then in 2014, Kia followed up with another sporty looking concept, the GT4 Stinger. The GT4 Stinger took on the form of a much more traditional front engine rear wheel drive sports coupe. You could kind of think of it as an Alfa Romeo 8C envisioned by Kia. Even though both of these concepts were pretty cool, no one actually expected Kia to follow through with this idea and actually create a production version of anything we saw in these concept cars. Indeed, back in 2011 and even in 2014, they couldn't. This was the time when Kia was just about starting its journey to be taken seriously by consumers, enthusiasts, and journalists. They had a huge reputation to build before they could even attempt to market such a vehicle to the masses. As we all know, Kia managed to do this. Through steady improvements in their cars, their marketing, and their general image, they reached a point when they could finally take a gamble on a sporty car. And finally, in late 2017, they did. That's when Kia unveiled the first ever Stinger GT, the automaker's first proper performance car wearing the shell of a liftback sedan. Immediately, people were very intrigued. The Stinger used a rear-wheel drive-based platform, they offered it with a manual transmission, and you could get it with a turbo V6 engine with around 365 horsepower. It was also extremely good-looking and extremely well-designed. Moreover, to make sure that this car lives up to the hubbub, Kia hired people who, let's just say, knew what they were doing. Leading the design team was Peter Schreier, an accomplished automotive designer and the man behind the original Audi TT. Meanwhile, at the helm of the engineering team, there was Albert Bierman, whose CV includes Vice President of Engineering at BMW M, and he is the current Vice President of Performance Development at Hyundai's N Division. This is the equivalent of starting a vacuum cleaner company and then hiring the chief engineer of Dyson to do all the heavy lifting for you. When people got behind the wheel of this car, this definitely showed. The rear-wheel drive platform combined with the punchy powertrains and the proper chassis tuning made the Stinger handle like nothing else Kia had ever made before, and it gave the best premium sedans the money could buy a run for their money. I did not think that one through. The Stinger also felt premium in just about every sense of the word. It had excellent tech, fantastic build quality, and it just looked great in my opinion. You could even call it desirable. Keep that word in mind as we go through this. At the beginning, things were looking pretty good for the Stinger. Kia even came out with a facelift version recently, which gave us updated styling and some better technology. However, even though things were looking up for the Stinger, it all came crashing down. Earlier in the year, 2022 obviously, Kia announced that this car will get the axe in a few years time. Why? Because it flopped. Let's dissect each reason why it failed one by one. The first reason why the Stinger ultimately wasn't successful for Kia is very easy to explain. The market. If you know anything about cars, you'll know that there is a still a giant seismic shift in the industry towards electrified powertrains and SUVs. To partially quote the angry video game nerd, SUVs up the ass. Even though people are finally starting to see that SUVs might not be the only way forwards, by 2018, mass adoption of larger vehicles and neglecting sedans and other segments was already well underway, and the Stinger just happened to be one of the many victims. Do I think that Kia would have had more success with the Stinger if it was a performance SUV? Not necessarily. Maybe more so, but only if we compare it with the Stinger sedan itself, but in the grand scheme of things, no. The market had already spoken by 2018. They wanted SUVs, and they especially wanted SUVs from Kia. The latter half of the 2010s was when stuff like the Kia Sportage absolutely catapulted in some regions of the world. In Macedonia, for example, the previous generation Sportage is everywhere. People just decided that if they were going to buy a Kia, it was going to be a family SUV that wasn't competing with German sports sedans, and that's exactly what happened. The second reason why is also pretty easy to grasp. Badge recognition, or as I prefer to title it with what I think is a more honest moniker, badge snobbery. While the Stinger may have been a fantastic sports sedan that still is very cost effective, there was no getting away from the reality. It's a Kia. If you're going to enter a market dominated by BMW, Mercedes-Benz and Audi, you're basically setting one foot in the grave. 
Like some of you watching, I also wish this was a different story, but for a lot of people, they'd rather spend a lot more money to tell people they drive a BMW or a Mercedes, than spend f less for a car that's on the same dynamic level, but then be forced to tell people that they drive a Kia. It's the classic case of one word says it all, and looking for social acceptance. Now if you're looking for social acceptance from people who will judge you if you drive a Kia, you need to find new people. Do I think that Kia would have had more success with this whole idea if they sold the Stinger as a Genesis? Well, they already do. The Genesis G70 is essentially just the Kia Stinger with a different body and a slightly nicer interior, and that one doesn't seem to be doing all that well either. Does it annoy me that the Kia Stinger is a victim of badge snobbery? Absolutely. The whole idea behind badge snobbery gives me a serious, serious case of rectal prolapse, but we simply can't change some people's views on things like that. It makes me sad as well because I wanted the Kia Stinger to succeed because I love that car. With that being said, these are the most likely reasons why the Stinger ended up being a flop. I will definitely miss it when it's gone and I know a lot of other people will too. Hopefully Kia will put together some type of electric powered replacement for this fallen hero. My hopes are high. Thank you so much for watching this video, everybody. If you liked it, be sure to hit like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, tell me what you think of the Kia Stinger and why you think it failed in the comments below. Also, follow me on social media. There will be links in the description. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.